Welcome to our review on percentage yield. So the first thing we really need to know is the actual formula for calculating percentage yield. So they're not going to give you this on the exam paper, so make sure that you have learned this one. So to work out the percentage yield, you do the actual yield, which they will give you in the question, divided by the theoretical yield, and then we times that answer by 100 because it is a percentage. Before we can actually calculate the percentage yield, we've got to know how to work out the theoretical yield. So to give you an example of the kind of question we could have that would ask us to do this, we've got one here at the top. So nitrogen reacts with hydrogen to make ammonia. We've got the balanced equation in the middle there, and it tells us to calculate the theoretical yield of ammonia when 12 grams of hydrogen reacts with an excess of nitrogen. So the first thing we need to do is to calculate the relative formula masses of the two chemicals we're concerned with. Now, because in the question it tells us that there is an excess of nitrogen, we can ignore the nitrogen on the left there. We're only concerned, therefore, with hydrogen and with ammonia. So using the periodic table, which is on that data sheet in the exam, Remember, that's not just a piece of paper just to doodle on. That actually does have a periodic table on the other side if you flip it over. Look up hydrogen and you'll find that its relative atomic mass is 1.0. And if we look, we've got two hydrogens there. So H2 tells us there's two of them. So two times one gives us two for our hydrogen. We do the same thing for ammonia, which has the formula NH3. So three hydrogens, one nitrogen. Look it up on the periodic, periodic table, and what we've got is 14 for nitrogen plus our 3 times 1, which is our hydrogen, gives us our relative formula mass of 17 for ammonia. The next step is we've got to go back to look at that balanced symbol equation. If it was a 1 to 1 ratio, then we don't need to do anything at this point. But in this one, you can see that 3 moles of hydrogen reacts to make two moles of ammonia. So using the relative formula masses from our previous step, we then have to multiply it by the number of moles. So hydrogen has a relative formula mass of two, and because we've got three moles, it's two times three, which gives us six. Do the same with the ammonia, this time it's two times our 17 to give us 34. The last thing to do to calculate your theoretical yield is go back to get the information from the question. So we know that 12 grams of hydrogen is reacting. That's our limiting reactant. So we do the mass of limiting reactant divided by the sum of the relative formula mass for our reactant, and we times that by the sum of the relative formula mass for our product. So in this case, it's going to be 12 from the question divided by the six we worked out for our hydrogen on the previous slide, and then we multiply that by our ammonia, which was 34. And that gives us a total of 68 grams as our theoretical yield. So once we've calculated the theoretical yield, they could very well ask us to go on to calculate the percentage yield. In order to do that, they've got to give you one more piece of information, which is the actual yield obtained. So that will be stated in the question somewhere. So in this case, I've given you the actual yield being 54.0 grams, and then we need to calculate the percentage yield. So we do our actual 54 divided by the theoretical, which was 68, and then we multiply that answer by 100 to give us the percentage and we end up with a percentage yield of 79.4 to three significant figures. Once you've done your calculation, there is one handy little check you can do to make sure you've got it right. And that's just to have a look at your percentage and make sure it's somewhere between 0% and 100%. It can't be more than that. So if you've got an actual percentage yield you've calculated of 163%, for example, you've gone wrong. And the most likely thing you've done is you've put your numbers the wrong way round when you've divided. So just flip them the other way up, times that answer by 100, and that should sort your problem for you. 
They sometimes have a follow-up question in the exam to ask you about why your percentage yield is less than 100%, and there's a few reasons for this. Firstly, the reactants may react in a different way than we expected in air. Secondly, the reaction may not go to completion, so some of our actual products may not be formed because there's still some reactants left over. And finally, some product may be lost through some means. It could be if we're transferring from one reaction vessel to another, we could have left some residue on one of them. It could be that there's some residue left on filter paper, for example. It could be that some has been lost during a fizzing reaction. So make sure that you remember those three different ways that we can lose some of our product. Hopefully at the end of this video, you can now calculate the theoretical yield of a product from a given mass of reactant, and you can recall the formula for percentage yield and use it to calculate the percentage yield of a product.